Hey Pam. Hi Marino. Um, how's it going? I'm doing well. And you? Good. Um, you look like you're enjoying your new role over there at SPC. Yes, it's going swimmingly. Hmm. Right, I've um, got some urgent homework for you. We need you to, to learn all about this harvest strategy stuff and report back to me on Friday. All good? Yeah, sounds good. Good. Then swim to it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hello, Janti. Hi, Marino. Hey, I need your help, Janti. I have to learn about harvest strategies, and I know you're an expert. Do you think you can help me out? Sure. First, ask yourselves, do you want healthy, sustainable fish stocks? Of course. Okay, and do you want biological, economic and social objectives to be at the heart of fisheries management decisions? Absolutely. And do you want to move away from short-term reactive decision making and instead take timely planned and rational action in response to the changes in the stock status? Yes, it's all of us. And do you agree that my hair looks fantastic? Actually, it does look fantastic. Good, then you want a harvest strategy. The main goal is to achieve long-term objectives for the fishery through a planned management approach. And importantly, the process is stakeholder driven. For example, it includes managers, scientists, industries, NGOs, etc. This is critical to success. Okay, this all sounds great, but how do we develop a harvest strategy? You need four main components that link together. The first is management objectives to describe what you want to achieve for the fishery. Second, you need to develop a management procedure which guides you on how much fishing to allow to meet your objectives. Thirdly, to use a management procedure, you need this thing called management strategy evaluation, which is used to test that the management procedure is likely to work. Finally, you need a monitoring program through which you can keep an eye on what's going on in the fishery and check that you're achieving the objectives. Thanks, Shanti. How can I find out more? Start with management objectives. For those, Rob Silman. Minaka, Shanti. Bye, Marino. So the first thing you need to think about when developing a harvest strategy are your management objectives. These are the aims and goals of your fishery. They're important because they sit at the heart of the harvest strategy approach. Can you give me some examples? Sure. Stock sustainability, economic benefits, employment opportunities. These are just a few. Everyone's going to have their own. You also need to think about how you're going to measure your management objectives you need to decide what data you're going to collect to see how your fisher is performing over time. These data are called your performance indicators. And who decides what these objectives should be? Stakeholders, of course. It's their fishery after all. That's right. You just need to ask yourself, what do you want to get from your fishery? OK, so when you know what the objectives are, how does this harvest strategy help you achieve it? Well, that's the job of the management procedure, and for that, you should speak to Brad. Uh, so can I ask, what's your objective? I just want to catch more fish than that guy. Hey Brad. Hey Marino. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about... Uh... Or for strategies, right? Yeah. How do you know? Shandy told me about it. Ah. After defining your management objectives, you develop your management procedure. But Brad, how does it all work? You start with the data collection process. These data are used to estimate the status of the stock. You then use a pre-agreed rule to decide how much fishing can take place. What? Pre-agreed rule? Yes, everyone agrees in advance what to do if the status of the stock changes. For example, if the fish population goes up or down. By pre-agreeing, it speeds up the whole process and you take action when you need to. It creates more certainty for everyone. 
Wait, 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 wait. Who determines what management procedure you should take, Brad? Stakeholders do. It's their fishery after all. Ultimately, you want to develop a management procedure that has the best chance of achieving your management objectives. Right, so how do you determine which management procedure you should use, Brad? Three words, my friend. Management strategy evaluation. Go and see Finley about it. He's an expert. Hey, Finley. Oh, hey, Marino. What are you up to? I'm in the market for a new car. I'm just doing a little research, you know? Oh, good luck with that. Hey, I'm actually learning about harvest strategies. And I was wondering if you could help me out with uh, management strategy evaluation. You're an expert, eh? Hey, Merci. Uh, I know a thing or two. You use it to help choose your management procedure. Yeah, I just learned about that. It's a bit like choosing which car you're going to buy. You wouldn't buy the first car that you saw. Now, nah, I'd want to test drive it at least several times and choose the one that really suited me, you know? Exactly, and it's the same principle here. So, I wouldn't choose this car because I don't like the colour of it. I wouldn't choose this car because I think it's too big. And I wouldn't choose this car because I think it's too... Hey, would you look at this guy? Chief scientist thinks that he's royalty. Anyway, where was I? You try before you buy, and it's the same when developing a management procedure. You test out lots of different ones and find the one that has the best chance of achieving your management objectives, and that's what MSE does. I see, but how does it all work? Well, we use computer simulations to try out hundreds of different scenarios, and can you imagine coming into work on that thing? Hey, that's mine. All right, so, can you tell me more about the monitoring strategy? Well, the best person to ask would be Nan, um, but I think she's in the meeting right now. Um, actually, no, she's just over there. Oh, hello, Moreno. I've been watching you for some time now. Right. So can you tell me more about the monitoring strategy? Yes. After developing, testing, and agree on a management procedure, you need to put it into action. While your management procedure is running, you keep a close eye on your fishery to make sure everything is running properly. And how do we do that? By collecting data and compare them to where we would like to be, just like I've been collecting data on how many croissants you have been eating and compare them to what you have been telling people. Hi Marino, how's it going? I'm doing well. We need you to learn all about this harbour strategy stuff and report back to me by Friday. Hey Nan, mm -hmm. after we start to use a management procedure, is it locked in forever? Of course not. If it's working well and you are achieving your objectives, you should stick with it. But what if something unforeseen happens and the procedure just doesn't work as expected? Then we have what is called an exceptional circumstance. Then we pause, try to understand why, and then decide if we can modify or we need a new procedure. Thanks Nan. No worries. So I think I finally get it. A harvest strategy is simply a plan for managing the fishery that focuses on achieving long-term objectives. It's stakeholder driven. Managers and fishers have to be involved from the start, but they'll need technical support and guidance along the way. At the center of the harvest strategy are the management objectives. Basically, ask yourself, what do you want from the fishery? So yeah, I can see it makes sense. Having a harvest strategy in place should allow us to move away from short-term reactive decisions 
Instead, we can take timely, pre-agreed actions when the stock status changes. It means more certainty for everyone. Taking actions that will meet our objectives for the fishery, everyone should want this. I'm sure there's plenty more stuff to learn, but right now, I think that's enough. Well, time to see Pam.